got stuck in shuffle land for a long, long time. You know the place. Listen, there's nothing wrong with that. It's really the heartbeat of so much blues and you should definitely know it. But if you find yourself stuck repeating that over and over and over, then it's probably time to add a few tricks to your blues. And today we're gonna focus on one super cool chord trick that's pretty sophisticated, but we're gonna get it down on the fretboard and help you use it really in any bar of a 12 bar progression to help spice things up. Hey, John here, and this is your Tuesday Blues, where each week we come together for a straightforward blues lesson that will help you play the music you love. It's what it's all about. So if that's something that you're into, hit the like button and let's get on with the lesson. Okay, so what makes that example sound saucy? Well, two reasons. Really, one, I'm not playing the standard shuffle. I'm playing the bass right on top of the beat, and I'm kind of letting the chords imply the shuffle groove. So instead of this, we get this. Notice how I didn't just pump the shuffle out. I let the bass and the chords work together to establish the groove. It's a little more laid back and it creates some space for us to work in, which brings me to the second reason that this sounds at least a little bit spicy, and that's that I'm using the diminished seventh chord, the fully diminished chord, as an approach chord. It functions as a bit of a bridge to lead us into the chord changes. We'll dive into exactly how to do that in a 12 bar blues in a minute, but first, what the heck is a diminished seventh chord? Diminished seventh or a fully diminished chord is a chord that's made up of the root, the minor third, the flat fifth. And so far that's sounding a lot like a diminished triad, right? But we're gonna add one more minor third interval on top and we end up with a double flat seventh. So it's minor and it's diminished. And even though that double flat seven is basically a six, we think of it as a double flat seven and man, is it interesting. It's not stable at all. This chord wants to go somewhere. Think about this A major chord. Nice and stable. It's at home, it's at rest. But now listen to this A diminished seven, or an A fully diminished, whichever term you prefer. Super unstable, right? Hey, do me a favor, if you like this lesson, if it's helping you, hit the subscribe button and enable notifications. My mission is to get blues lessons out to as many guitarists as possible, and your sub helps the channel grow and helps get the word out to other blues guitarists. So hit subscribe on YouTube and let's get back to the lesson. All right, I know we didn't get too in the weeds on the theory behind this. It's definitely interesting and something you should check out if you're so inclined, but I wanna focus on getting this under your fingers. And we're gonna start by looking at two chord forms. We're gonna start with a form that has the root on the fourth string. Now this chord can seem a little bit tricky and if you go straight for it, it perhaps it will be tricky for you. It kind of was for me, but it's a chord shape that once I got down, I ended up using it a whole lot in my blues and I think it will add some nice spice to what you're doing on the guitar. And once I played this over and over, maybe struggled with it for a little while, I kind of realized that it's really basically something very familiar with a couple of tweaks. If you think about your D major chord shape, this little triangle here on the top three strings, if you finger it like this to get into our diminished chord from here, what you can do is just drop down a string set so that you're on four, three, and two, and just pause for a second and listen to that. Definitely not as nice and complete and as stable as this D major chord. We've got the heart of our diminished chord right here. We just need one more thing, and that happens to be right under this little finger. When I move that, this finger is right over the first string, third fret in this case, and that's where we need to be. So put that little finger down, and you've got a movable diminished chord shape here. And the chord's gonna get its name from where the root is. That's on the fourth string. This is an E note, so we've got an E diminished here. We can move it up to A. And there's a funny thing about diminished chords because of their interval set. If you move it up a minor third, you get the same notes just in a different order, which is super useful and something to keep in mind. But right now, I want you to focus on playing from the root. Let that be your first step to kind of latch onto this chord shape. Find the root that you're going for, like A. 
right here on the fourth string and that's going to be the diminished chord that we're looking for so that's the fourth string root shape let's move on to the fifth string rooted shape let's build an e diminished chord so we're going to root this on the seventh fret of the fifth string that's an e that's giving the chord the name and then what we're going to do is put the ring finger down on the eighth fret here nice tritone uh, interval there and then on the third string that's the index finger and then on the second string that's the little finger that's at fret six and then fret eight right so we got the tritone just that really cool interval there and then we've got these tones on top have a look at that and have a listen to it again a super unstable chord but it gives this thing its interest its spice all right if it's your first time out with these chord shapes it might take you a little bit to get it down but i've got a drill a little bit later in the lesson that i'll show you to help you get some reps in using these chord shapes but now that we have these chords, how do we use that tension in the chord to spice up our progressions? Well, something interesting happens when we play it just before a chord change and we play the diminished seventh a half step lower than the chord we're going into. For example, if we're changing into D7 in the progression, let's play a D flat diminished seven just before it. Now, doesn't that D-flat diminished seven want to resolve up to the D7? It sounds that way to me. And the reason is that there's a tritone embedded in the diminished chord that resolves up to the root and then down to the major third. Each of these notes just moving a half step. a very strong resolution. It's pretty sweet, pretty interesting. So back to our 12 bar blues, we can insert this flat diminished seven chord before any chord change. Here's a little practice drill to help you spot places to insert these chords. Remember, I'm playing in a half step lower than the chord I'm changing into. So I'll play an A flat diminished seven before an A, a D flat diminished seven before D, and an E flat diminished seven before the E. Practice this drill, and yeah, it's overkill for the idea of using the diminished seven chords, but that's kind of the point. Use it to get your brain and get your ears tuned up to the idea and the sound, and then immediately put it into a progression of your own and use it to taste. Don't let the chord name and maybe some of the theory that goes along with this chord scare you off. Try to get this under your fingers and use it to spice up your 12 bar blues. If you enjoyed this and want to keep learning, click or tap right over here and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, practice smart and play on.